Hello everyone, I'm Adam the Fanatic, also known as Mario Fanatic 15, and this is not going to be my typical sort of video. This is going to be more of a mission statement where I explain who I am, what I'm doing, and why I'm doing it. I don't have a formal script this time around, so I may cut out some bits of dead space here and there, but other than that I'm going to try and do this in a single tank. I don't have a script this time, though I do have a small outline on my phone, so I may glance at it occasionally. Sorry for not keeping contact with the camera as I normally would. So, firstly, who am I? I'm Adam. I'm a Christian. I love video games. I've been gaming for almost 30 years now. Since I was two years old, I had an NES with Super Mario Brothers on it. Many kids who grew up in the 80s and 90s, that was their first game, and no exception here. <laughs> uh, as I grew up, I had all the major Nintendo home consoles, the SNES, the N64 was the whole family's, but I still played it quite a bit, <laughs> GameCube, and although I had graduated high school at the time, I did eventually get a Wii as well. I've also had a number of their portable consoles and a number of Sony consoles as well. What am I doing exactly? Obviously I'm doing game reviews, that is the main purpose of this channel. And that is going to continue being its purpose going forward. For the time being I am doing video game reviews, so in the near future I would probably like to try doing board game reviews as well. It is a very different beast to review and would require a slightly different mindset definitely a reworking of how I do things. I'd probably use a mixture of both of my physical components and of video feed from Tabletop Simulator to capture if possible. I'm probably never going to do Let's Plays, although I don't want to completely rule that out. It's something that I'm kind of interested in, but it's definitely not going to be the focus of this channel, and it is not something I'm going to be doing any time in the near future, if at all. So... What is my review philosophy? I believe that when I review a game, you should be able to tell from the review to get a general idea of whether or not you'll like it, even if your opinion is going to differ from mine. To this point in purpose, I believe that even if I like a game, I should point out its flaws, and even if I dislike a game, I should point out its strengths. That way, not only can you see my opinion, but you can better judge how you'll feel about that game, even when it doesn't line up with that opinion. As for the kinds of games I'll be reviewing, I play all kinds of games, really. I mean, I'll play platformers, I'll play RPGs, I'll play strategy games, turn-based or real-time. The only ones that I'm really going to actively avoid fall into three main categories. Sports games, especially realistic ones, they're just not that interesting to me, I'm sorry. Uh, shooters... Now, I don't mind the basic concept of a shooter. It's like, I enjoy ones that are mixed with other genres. I just don't enjoy the pure point-click-shoot-that's-it type game. I don't like things like Doom, Halo, Quake, etc. Now, there are other games like, say... Um, the Jedi Knight series, Metroid Prime, yeah I know lots of you would rather I not call that one a shooter to begin with, and Deus Ex especially are ones that I do very much enjoy, but they're not your typical shooter. Uh, the other one I'm probably going to avoid, at least for now, is point and click adventure games. It's not that I don't enjoy them, I actually rather do, I just... I actually did start to write a review for one before doing Sword of the Samurai, and I just realized I'm not entirely sure how to discuss a point-and-click adventure game. It's very different in tone and style from your from the types of games that I have reviewed that I'd need to figure out a different way to discuss it. Now, I should make it clear that I will always be family friendly. The games I review may not always be. I I don't I tend to stay away from anything that's excessively gory or such, but I do play some M rated games. I will definitely be reviewing T rated games on here. I myself I avoid cussing. I 
do not use sexual innuendos or anything like that. And most of the games I play tend not to have much of that kind of stuff either, but there are games I play like, say, StarCraft or the aforementioned Deus Ex. If I, Deus Ex is obviously an M-rated game and it gets bloody. There's definitely lots of cursing in that one, but I myself, you won't hear those kind of words coming out of my mouth. So, why am I doing this exactly? To be quite frank, I'm hoping to start making some money off of this. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I am handicapped. I live with my parents permanently. I That's not going to change, but I currently have no source of income, and I w would like to eventually make money off of advertisement. I want to open up a Patreon later. I'll get into that when I talk about my goals for the channel, but for now, just know that yes, I am here for the money, but if this doesn't work out, I've learned a good bit of video editing here, and uh, maybe I can put that to you somehow. That's certainly a technical skill that has to be marketable somehow. So, am I alone in this? No, but I am doing most of the primary work on this, like the scripting, the editing, figuring out how to do the shots, all that kind of stuff, all the the gameplay, that is all me. However, like I said before, I am permanently handicapped and living with my family and everything you see around here, I would not have if not for them. I mean, my computer, my, I obviously wouldn't be able to do reviews without that. The camera I'm using to shoot this is not mine. It, And it's a good camera. <laughs> uh, everything I have around here, that is not my doing. And I would like to change that in the future. But yeah, I, I have a lot to be thankful for here. I'm really blessed in that regard. So, what are my goals for this channel? Short term, I'm just trying to get recognized at this point. I want to get enough subscribers and enough time watched that I will eventually be able to get monetized with YouTube. Once I start to have some decent number of subscribers, I, I don't know exactly how many, let's just say maybe a hundred. I'd probably, I definitely want to open a Patreon in the future. I only have five subscribers at the moment, so I don't find it worth it at this point in time, but once I actually have people that are watching and following, I do definitely intend to do that. Medium term goals. I want to upgrade my computer. I did just get a new graphics card, and that's completely thanks to my father, but uh, I would like to get a better processor for it, because now that I am doing video editing, that's more important than it was when I was using this pretty much just for gaming. Uh, I also want to buy a paid version of DaVinci Resolve. Don't get me wrong, the free version has been a great boon to me in this and it's very useful for all the kinds of stuff that I've been doing. But I would like to upgrade to the paid version and that is not cheap, but then again it's a very powerful piece of software and even the free version it's like I've been able to do so much with it already it's it's pretty awesome all the options it gives. Long term it's harder to say exactly I mean I don't know maybe eventually get a machine that can I don't know I don't see much point in it right now in doing 4k but by time I could feasibly afford that maybe it'll be common enough that it would be worth it to actually go and start recording in 4K. At this point, even if I had unlimited funds and a dream computer that could run five monitors at 4K with no slowdown, I still don't see much point because at this point in time there's just not many people on YouTube watching in 4K. And I, I know you're out there, but you're definitely the minority. I, that's just the fact of the matter is it wouldn't be worth it at this point in time even if I could do it. <laughs> but who knows if that would be far enough off in the future that by time it is feasible it may change for me. I would like to take a moment to 
thank people that have helped me or inspired me. Of course, first and foremost, thank you to God for everything. Thank you to my family for encouraging me to do this. None of them are really into gaming like I am, but they've been very supportive so far, and I really appreciate that. I mean, like I said earlier, everything I have is because my parents have been very understanding of my disabilities and such. Uh, I would like to thank Zephyr Workshop. You, they are they make a board game called Agus. I kind of want to review that one and. Like, if I do end up doing board game reviews, I'll probably be among the first, if not the first one I do, but they've also been pretty supportive of this. I've been posting links to the reviews there, and Zia Comics, local friendly, local game shop, and lots of gaming stuff there, and they're more about board gaming, of course, but Inspirations, lots of, there's lots of channels that I watch, some more than others, but as far as video gaming is concerned, my primary inspirations are Lazy Game Reviews, The Spiffing Brit, Ant Dude, The Great Clement, Some Call Me Johnny, and Exo Paradigm Gamer. And they all do things in different styles. If any of you ever happen to see this and want to do a crossover, please send me a message. <laughs> uh, then there's various tabletop gaming channels that I watch as well. The Dice Tower, Tom Vassell, and everyone else there. Well, not, I don't watch all of it, but they're my primary source for board game news. I also rather enjoy Watch It Played by, uh, I can't remember his name. I, I'll still link to their videos, but for board game tutorials, there's no one better. They're not the best at reviews, but that's not what they're trying to do in the first place, so why would I expect them to be? <laughs> And the other board game one that I tend to watch is board game, or no, I'm sorry, Game Boy Geek. And they do really good short reviews, and aside from Dice Tower, they're my favorite reviewer for the matter. Uh, I also take a lot of inspiration from Nostalgia Critic. Now granted, I actually prefer more when he's just addressing the films as himself, Doug Walker, rather than as the Nostalgia Critic, but... <laughs> The channel has shown me a lot of ideas for how to do various things in reviews and also how to approach explaining ideas within... Basically, my favorite parts for it are when he goes more into the filmmaking details and, like... Yeah, I, I'd probably be able to better explain if I myself had studied film, but that's not me. I, I'm here for gaming, and I hope to inform you about games that you may enjoy and hopefully point out some hidden gems that you've missed in the past. If you've actually watched this video, then thank you for being one of the strange few people that decided to watch through my little message here, and I'll try and have a, another review up by the middle of April. I'll begin working the, on that Monday, maybe Wednesday at the latest. Thank you everybody, and have a nice day. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.